Um, so, eight minutes, an academic having to talk for eight minutes is not uh, necessarily always all that good, so I will attempt to talk uh, in that amount of time. Um, and in doing so, I thought it would be useful really to sort of introduce a series of the underlying approaches which I have to how I work uh, with archaeology at the, the, uh, the Pitt Rivers, um, in order to give an overview really of a series of recent initiatives which are all linked and I think that's the first thing to say is that you know, research in the collections of the, 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 uh, the uh, of, of if you like all our institutions are, are things that build up over time and sort of expertise uh, sort of you know, develops in a team and, and in an institution over the years. So in sort of recent years, I've undertaken a, a series of overviews which have sort of worked at a, a sort of um, at a more and more uh, defined level um, in terms of archaeology. Initially, an overview with uh, this project, um, sorry, which was the <coughs> characterisation of archaeology um, at the uh, the Pitt Rivers. We began as a project there in order to try to count everything, in order to work out really uh, what it is uh, that we have, how many objects from each region and each, uh, each, each sort of yeah, period and so forth it, it is uh, that we have. And that leads into, really, or introduces the first of what I want to call the underlying sort of yeah, principles of sort of how I think uh, research works really well in a museum sort of context. And that, the, uh, the first idea really being that in sort of yeah, managing research in the, uh, the, the, uh, the museums, we need to be evidence-led. So we need to make sure that as a museum, we just, uh, we, you know, we, uh, you know, that we don't just sort of you know, repeat the things that we think are true about our museums, but we actually look at what the objects are telling us. And we count them, and we work on them, and, and we look in a logical way at the back of the store, you know, what is there. And in terms of our work on the world archaeology, what that led us into was sort of you know, counting up how many objects we had from each individual area of the world. Each of these experts, sort of you know, chapters which are written up as overviews of sort of you know, what we have from, from the Stone Age, from Africa, what we have from Easter Island and so forth, all of which are online and you can read the, you know, the whole book online if you're really keen. I've got some of the, you know, the books here and you're, you're welcome to have a copy. Um, and what that really told us in terms of the archaeology was how much we had, how much we'd overlooked from the, uh, the general himself. And so one of the outcomes of sort of what we learned was we haven't thought about you know, Pitt Rivers as an archaeologist uh, because, in fact, uh, what we have, which hasn't been looked at for 130 years, is all of the key archaeological objects that, 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 you know, that he, he obtained, he sort of you know, dug up in the early part of his life as an archaeologist. And so those, though, uh, that emerged into a second uh, sort of you know, project in order just to say, well, uh, well in terms of, of, sort of who the individuals are that are sort of, uh, sort of involved in the history of the, 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 uh, the museum, of course, at the top of the list, the largest number of objects there is the, uh, the general himself. So since then, we've been trying to make the general work rather harder for the museum than uh, maybe he has um, in sort of recent years. And that leads into the second of the underlying approaches or the principles I want to introduce which is that in the documentation process, our museum, our understanding of the museum, but also the museum itself, the objects are going to change. The numbers are going to change. We're going to find things, we're going to enhance our databases. But often we think of ourselves in a museum sort of context as sort of ensuring things are exactly the same. And the conservators work so hard doing that, and all of us in, the, in, sort, of, in sort of certain ways have to do that. But at the same time, research, and especially archaeological research, is a little bit interventionist, a little bit interested in how you transform you know, the world. Um, you know, really, any of that sort of research is going to change those objects in certain ways. In terms of this project, which was what emerged out of our overview, it was an ACE-funded DDF initiative, 
we applied to DDF and we said, we think we've got about 5,000 objects which were dug up you know, by the general between about 18, 1860s, 1870s. Uh, and out of fine grained, we then aimed to, you know, to get hold of every single one of those objects and to photograph it and to enhance the database record for it. And here are a number of the objects we looked at from the exception of a gold, uh, sort of a talk from the Iron Age, into the more everyday um, archaeological sherds, uh, you know, Roman shoes, uh, a, a Yorkshire scraper, another rather nicer scraper from Oxfordshire, other stone tools from the Neolithic. Uh, the, the, this is an axe, a cast of an axe from, from the south coast. And, a, a, and another tool from Yorkshire, almost like a map of England emerged out of these objects. And as of uh, today, I just sort of yeah, checked the database, the numbers have, I don't know if you can, can quite read this, but, but even only last year when that book came out, we estimated that the total number of objects from the, uh, the general was about 13 and a half thousand. As of now, there are 18, over 18,000 18, archaeological objects out of almost 28,000 in total. So we're, we're really, we've actually doubled elements of the collection. We've entirely revolutionised how many objects that, that, yeah, there are in terms of our understanding of this. And that obviously alters how we understand the history of archaeology, the number of sites from which these objects have been acquired. We now understand how to research each individual object has, has enormously grown from 65 up, up into, uh, 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 into, into the hundreds. Um, and of course, the significance of this isn't only about how many there are. Each individual object is able to link us with a location and a place and, and importantly, archaeological sites which are around sort of locations in which individual people live you know, today. And that leads us then into the third thing which I think underlines and ought to underlie how we undertake research in a museum context, which is that even though we're working in the stores, exactly the same as if we're working on exhibitions, we need to be facing outwards. And we need that work to be looking outwards from the museum and not only looking inside. I have a minute left and I think I'm on time. So, we've looked outwards in a series of ways with our team. We've undertaken events with our, yeah, local archaeological groups up and down the country from Yorkshire to Folkestone. We've been on the radio, on the TV. We're now with the, uh, the BM, we're working with the Portable Antiquities Scheme who are an outfit who have the infrastructure for working with archaeologists across the country, these things called HERs, Historic Environment Records, uh, and we're handing our data over to them. We're enhancing our data and handing it over, and they're going to share it um, internationally uh, via the, the, these, all these various websites, uh, which are listed up there. We're holding a workshop with Historic Environment Archaeologists here in Oxford next year. Here's a list of the local authorities with, with whom we, we've said, hey, we've got an object from, from your county. So, to, and so there's another sort of you know, dot on the map in terms of your understanding of the archaeology of your county. Um, and here is a, an image of sort of where those dots on the maps are from the initial sort of, uh, sort of you know, working over, over from that that the BM sent me this morning, in fact. So they are my three overall sort of, sort of, yeah, principles that underline the kind of archaeology work that we're doing at the, uh, the, uh, the Pitt Rivers. If you want to explore these things further, uh, we have, as I say, this book, which is open access on, on the website. You can write it down. I have a number of uh, copies here. You're welcome to take one away if you're interested. So any archaeologists or others in the room are welcome to take one. Um, we, you can look at online at the, the, uh, the various websites there. We have an AHRC funded you know, range of images from that and a lot of social media. Thanks very much.